there was this embankment and they had just drilled into it and it was all splayed open and uh, the, the dirt was pink on either side and um, there were roots all exposed. It was just a mess, but it looked like the earth had been violated. And at the bottom, there were all these rocks that, that looked like treasure and the sky was blue and innocent. And so it was just all there for me. And all I had to do was go, <sighs> go home <laughs> and, and paint. I don't think that there was ever a time I wasn't drawing, um, so it's hard for me to even pinpoint, but I do come from a, a family of artists. My mother got her art degree from UT, and so did I, and my dad, Houston sculptor, Bob Fowler, was very active. The way he would weld metal, his lines are similar to how I draw. It was like a 3D drawing, really, and when I look at my drawings and I see the sinuous lines that I use, maybe in tree roots, and I can see where I got that from, like a handwriting passed down unconsciously from my father. Oh my goodness, it's a, a, a big opening, and there's some rocks that are caught in the roots, and you can see the roots coming down through the, the soil, and you can really see the structure of how the tree actually is holding on because there's, I can see right there that that root is going at a horizontal, in a horizontal direction straight into the, the embankment. That's why I like the edges of the, the water because the water tears open openings to the underworld. College, I was really into like what goes on between people, at least two people in a room. And there was usually a low ceiling and it was claustrophobic. I sort of didn't get any attention and I was naturally pretty shy. So I just painted what I wanted to paint. After I graduated from UT, I took a job with the Texas Observer. I did a little bit of everything. I did the Rick Perry paper dolls. It was fun, but it was not my concept. I occasionally did some murals for Whole Foods. One was kind of a rainforest scene um, around a skylight on the cereal aisle at the 10th and Lamar store here in Austin. Then occasionally I would be sent to different stores to do murals for them. Just real straightforward mural work, but it didn't have any hippies or anything in it. So I guess it was 1991, I was working for Whole Foods. I say on the chip aisle, I think he remembers it being the can aisle, but we were both stocking um, groceries and... We just uh, started talking and I, I guess I probably asked what you did and you said you're an artist and doing this. And you asked what I did and I said I paid, played in the band Glass Eye. And what I remember you saying is, Oh, I love that band. <laughs> you were resting way going 79, and I don't remember being there at that time. When I married Brian, I finally had my own studio. I painted things that were all around me, and I had been gardening a lot, and so I, I just switched to more earth themes and uh, botanical images and no people. I dropped the human figure totally out of my paintings. I just wanted to draw plants, rocks, sky, water, you know, really elemental things. And I also really wanted to see where I would go with abstraction of those things. I was driving through the Bastrop area on Highway 71 on my way to Houston and uh, I saw this tree and it looked like it was still alive, but it was struggling to survive and it was just a year after the fires. It's called Earth Has a Long Memory because for us it was devastating, it was horrible and we had this big fire. But our lives are so little in the span of time compared to the life of the Earth and I think the Earth has the memory, but um, it's so resilient and it's gonna be around for a really long time. It's 
called Spring Everything Changes, and it's really about a specific peach orchard that I passed on the way to the Texas Hill Country very early spring with my daughter, and I saw this particular tree and all the ones around it, and I uh, saw my daughter, it was just she and I in the truck, and she was a teenager almost, and, and her beauty was so gorgeous, and I looked from her to the tree and, and back, and I just thought, oh, the tree is showing me that um, beauty and youth is very brief. I remember the colors I saw driving through, and I kept repeating them to myself, and when I got home, I took notes, and then I started painting, and so it was all from memory. I always referred to myself as a painter, but one recent project took me in another direction. My husband wrote a musical called Ivy in the Wicker Suitcase. The story is about a 10-year-old girl growing up in Austin, Texas in 1938. She falls into the underworld where she begins a quest to save herself, her mother, and the family home by retrieving the wicker suitcase full of money her father took with him to the underworld when he died. I said a little bit of Maurice Sendak and a little bit of Edward Gorey and maybe some inspiration from The Wizard of Oz. And, and knowing him, I think I said the right things. Once we started working together, I, it was so perfect because Valerie added the other element, uh, the more feminine element to it, So, uh, which I, I guess I hadn't really seen. And it wasn't until she proposed that she'd do it and she did a few illustrations that I realized this is completely, it works perfectly well with my idea. It works better than the things I thought I wanted. The image for the last panel in the book is a scene, uh, sort of an aerial view of what I imagined was Ivy's home area in, around Austin. The most important thing to me was imagining that this is Austin in 1938. It's hilly, it's rocky, there's lots of craggy oak trees, and there's holes between the rocks. And what I was thinking was that the creatures go in and out of those holes and Ivy has just come up from the underground. So those, those creatures know something about where she's been and what she has been through. And so they're, they're witnesses and the plants and the rocks are witnesses and those little holes. And you can see there's some holes that are portrayed. Some I just know in my imagination are there, but they, uh, they have ears and uh, eyes to the upper world. Conduits, that's you know the connection that I think all of us should have to the underworld or to, to not the underworld in any God sense or, or devil sense, but a sense of the earth as a living, breathing, valuable and important. The Crankies were born because we needed a way to promote Ivy on tour. I painted 30-foot long scrolls to illustrate several of the songs for live performances. Simple as it is, it's so unlike anything that any, anyone else was doing, I just thought it was would be such a blast. It had nothing to do with technology. We could do the show, and Valerie could do the Cranky, and I could stand there and sing it, and at no point was there a computer used in any aspect of this, not once. I don't think they're uh, any more complex, though I think they're kind of loose and a little bit more fun, actually, a little bit more psychedelic, too, because I had to make them flow, so I got to do a lot of swirls and just big swashes of paint. So right now, I'm working on documenting images from my immediate neighborhood and a few other neighborhoods around Austin. Instead of just nature itself, I'm more interested now in the interaction between humans and nature and also documenting the history of Austin a little bit, how I see it from my personal viewpoint and the place on earth that Austin is. So the neighborhoods are part of it, but the history of the neighborhoods are another part of it and the way nature interacts with the neighborhoods and the humans in the neighborhoods. It's a lot about the history of the place on earth that Austin is and I think water is going to be a big part of that because it's a conduit and it's a bloodstream to me uh, of the earth and it's what connects all the humans.